This is the world's smallest action camera. Sorry, let me give you a bit of a closer look because this thing is tiny. This is the Insta360 GO 3 and I've been having a ton of fun with this thing. You can mount it pretty much anywhere right out of the box and get some crazy cool angles and perspectives. It even comes with this fancy new action pod for extending the battery life and using as a remote control and monitor. But there are a few things to know before buying, so let's take a look. Welcome back, my name is Jack. I make videos about all things tech. Consider subscribing if you're new here. Insta360 did send me this for free to review, but this is not a sponsored video. These are my honest thoughts and opinions after having tested this out. And I have been pretty impressed by it. This is a tiny action camera with some pretty big possibilities. I've linked to the Go 3 in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. And that is an affiliate link which helps support me and the channel. If you've been looking for something versatile enough for vlogging with and capturing travel adventures, sports, then this is packed with features that have you covered. But first, let's talk about the design because the Go 3 has a pretty unique two-in-one form factor. The Go 3 itself is tiny. It's about the size of your thumb and super light at just 35 grams, which means you can fit it in all sorts of tight spaces for unusual angles and perspectives. I've had a ton of fun just seeing where I can use it. The back is magnetic, so you can just stick it to something metal, on a pipe, a bookshelf, the side of your car. It comes with a load of mounts in the box too. You can mount it pretty much anywhere and shoot some really creative stuff, which I'll show you later. It's also pretty much the same size as the previous Go 2 for anyone that's used that, but Insta360 have managed to up the battery life by 50%, now up to 45 minutes, depending on the mode and video resolution. And the Go 3 has better heat dissipation than before, so there's no record time limit, you're only limited by the battery life and the internal storage. The Go 3 has three options for either 32, 64 or 128 gigs of built-in storage. But this is completely new, this is called the Action Pod. The Go 3 just snaps in magnetically and locks safely in place, it's not going anywhere. And then there's a button on the side for releasing it so you can take it out again. This comes in the box, by the way. This is not an add-on. This increases the shooting time from 45 to 170 minutes. It has this big touchscreen on the back for choosing camera modes and settings. Plus, the whole screen flips up 180 degrees so you can see yourself when recording and vlogging. But by far the coolest feature is when you pop out the Go 3, you can still see a live preview on the action pod. It becomes this wireless monitor that you can use to remotely check your framing and the settings. You can start and stop recording by pressing the front of the Go 3 or use the record button on the action pod which also works wirelessly when it's out of the pod. On the side there's a power button and a Q button for some quick presets. You can customize these yourself for your most used and on the other side there's an unlock button for removing the Go 3 and a USB-C port for charging and data transfer. Even with the action pod, the whole setup is still pretty compact and the fact that you have both options gives you a lot of versatility for mounting and shooting. When mounting, you can just stick the Go 3 directly to something metal or use one of the mounts that comes in the box like this, this is the easy clip, pop the Go 3 in, clip it onto a cap and now you've got this hands-free first-person view for cycling or playing sports. My nephew loves football, his keep up skills are far better than mine so I gave it to him to get this shot. You could even try clipping it onto a backpack strap or maybe even a pet collar. You can also see how well the built-in flow state stabilization handles lots of movement. You get three levels to choose from. There is standard for sort of everyday use, high which I've used for cycling, and max for extreme sports like mountain biking and skiing. Also, for most of the video modes, it doesn't matter if the Go 3 is mounted vertically or horizontal as you can set it to record in portrait or landscape in either orientation or use the free frame mode to shoot with the entire sensor. So now you can choose your orientation after shooting, which is so useful. You can shoot one video and use it for YouTube and social content. You also get this cool pendant that you can wear and the Go 3 snaps on magnetically for another hands-free first person view, this time from a different perspective. You can also pop the pendant under your shirt for a more discreet look. You could adjust the length as needed and you also get this wedge shape to stick on the back to change the angle of the camera slightly which is also really useful. And then you get this, this is the pivot stand. This aligns itself magnetically to the bottom of the action pod and snaps into place and locks with metal buckles. It pivots and rotates into different angles and has a standard quarter inch mount for pairing with tripods or selfie sticks. You can get this handy two-in-one tripod and selfie stick combo separately 
And this is perfect for vlogging or setting the camera down to record a time lapse. The Go 3 has two built in mics there's one on the front and one on the top and they sound pretty decent for a camera that is this small and they also have a noise reduction feature for windy environments if you're sort of cycling or on a motorbike you also don't have to use the pivot stand with the action pod as it uses the same mounting system as the go 3 so with this setup you can get all sorts of creative shots with a selfie stick you can push and pull through small gaps through spaces that you've never really thought of before thanks to how tiny the camera is you also get this sticky mount which lets you take it even further and this sticks to pretty much any flat surface you can find with just a few seconds of pressure mount it to a window a windshield in a car this has loop recording which records continuously but only saves the last few minutes after you hit the record button. So you can basically use it as a dash cam and record an accident or a crash after it happens. Or use one of the other modes to record some driving footage for a vlog or road trip. Or make use of that really unique perspective you get from such a tiny camera and get a shot like this. Pretty cool looking angle for just chopping some fruit and not something that you usually see. And it's pretty easy to get with the pivot mount and the sticky base on the side of a knife. Or, you know, stick it on the barrel of a water pistol. I gave this to my nephew and he was all too happy to run around the garden and shoot water at me. Don't worry, I got him back good. All you need is a nice flat surface to mount to to get the best hold. If the sticky pad does lose its stick, you can just wipe it down and then dry it off and it somehow gets its stickiness back. I don't know how it works, but it just does. They also have this carry case that you can get for all of the essentials, plus you can find some specific mounts and harnesses and accessories for things like bikes or diving on their website. Also, worth noting that the Go 3 does come with this protective lens guard that you can just screw on and off, and despite its size, it does feel pretty durable, even if it does take a fall. The Go 3 camera itself is waterproof up to 16 feet, so feel free to take it for a swim but the action pod is only IPX4 water resistant against splashes and rain. So yeah, don't go swimming with that. The Go 3 has 10 shooting modes to choose from, starting with your classic video mode. This gives you the best resolution and image quality, but there is no 4K video here. The highest resolution you can shoot at is 2.7K at 30 FPS, which is a nice bump over the previous Go 2, but I guess with its size and the storage capacity and battery, that 4K video might just be a little bit too much for it at the moment. Maybe we'll get that in a future version. Nonetheless, the video quality from it looks great from such a tiny camera. I've been really happy with it, and it's more than enough for Instagram and TikTok, and even YouTube for things like vlogging. It does struggle a bit in low light though, it looks its best in bright sunny conditions. While you can shoot for longer periods, I think that capturing those short bursts of action are where the Go 3 really shines. It even now has pre-recording which captures the last 10 to 30 seconds before you start recording as well as everything that happens after so you're not going to miss any of the action. The standard video mode also goes up to 50 fps for even smoother video at either 1080 or 1440p. Interestingly though there's no 60 fps option. At first I thought maybe it's because this is like a European specific version where we use the PAL format but no, it's the same. Wherever you are, you're always limited to 50. You can swipe in from the right to slide out the auto and manual controls for things like shutter speed, ISO, white balance, so you can have that control when you need it. And they do make ND filters that pop on in place of that lens guard if you want even more control over the shutter speed on those bright sunny days. Now, I did touch on this earlier, but next up is free frame mode. Free frame? free frame that's really hard to say but with this you don't have to lock yourself into an aspect ratio before recording you can change it after the fact it does lower the resolution to 1440p but it means that you can record horizontal for youtube and vertical for instagram all at once you're not having to awkwardly crop some 16 by 9 video into vertical you can adapt it to wherever you want to share to it's great for action sports too as it shoots at the smoother 50 fps it also locks the video orientation to the horizon so it's always level, but you can toggle that off in post in the app. You can use time-lapse mode for speeding up a scene when the camera is stationary, or use time shift when you're moving to create a hyperlapse, and this is great for capturing a drive or a city walkthrough. Slow-mo is one of my favorites. It lets you shoot at 120 FPS at 1080p to slow down any fast-paced action four times. We had a lot of fun with this in our water fight. Yes, I got drenched, but we got some really cool looking footage. There's loop recording mode, which we mentioned earlier. 
Then lastly, there's a few stills modes with photo and HDR photo for more dynamic range, star lapse for photos with light trails, and interval for setting the camera to capture every three seconds to two minutes. I've also got to mention the Insta360 app. Now, they do have a PC and a Mac app, but I find the mobile app makes using the Go 3 just so much easier when you're out and about for both shooting and editing and then sharing. And you will need to download it to set it up for the first time. In some ways, it kind of works like the action pod. You can see a live preview from the camera. You can set your video mode, resolution, frame rate, all of the settings. You have access to all of the photos and videos that are stored on the Go 3, and you can even start editing them without having to download them first to your phone. You can trim the videos, make some exposure or color adjustments, add a filter, and there are so many to choose from, and they all look really good. They can really make your footage pop. If it's free frame video, I'm still struggling to say that, you can toggle the horizon lock on or off, or switch the video orientation depending on where you want to share to. But if you want to share something just really quickly, they have this really cool feature called auto edit under the stories tab where you can select a few clips, get the AI to analyze them, and automatically find the highlights and edit them into a little sequence for you, so it's just ready to go. What you're seeing here was completely generated and edited by the auto edit. I haven't done anything to it. It even adds some music and edits to the rhythm. You can make some tweaks to the clips if you're not happy with it or change the template. Sometimes you might need to make some changes, but generally it gives you a nice little sequence of highlights that you can share quickly. I think my favourite thing about the Go 3 has to be its tiny size. I've had a lot of fun just seeing where I can put this thing and what I can mount it to to get an interesting shot or angle. And the fact that it comes with so many mounts means it's ready to use out the box. But the small size does have a few drawbacks. There's no 4K video, and you can drain through the battery quite quickly if you're wanting to record some long continuous shots outside of the action pod. I'd say the Go 3 works best when you're trying to capture those sort of short bursts of action, and that's where the new pre-record feature comes in really useful. It's ready to save those moments just before and after something happens. There's no removable battery or expandable storage here. You are stuck with either the 32, 64, or 128 gigs that you buy. I was sent the 64 gig model, and honestly, I'd say that's a pretty good sweet spot. I still had about a third of the capacity left after each day of shooting, so I wasn't having to sort of manage storage on the go, which no one wants to do. But if you think that you're going to be using this a lot, especially you know if you're going to be all day up in the mountains hiking or skiing and you want to capture lots of footage, then yeah, maybe go for that 128 option. You've got all of the shooting modes that you'll need, free frame being especially cool for shooting footage for different platforms in different aspect ratios. I've just had a ton of fun with it and I think you will too. I've linked to it in the description if you want to check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments below if you've got any ideas that you think I should try. Leave a like if you enjoyed seeing me get soaked. Hit subscribe and the bell to see more tech videos from me. Thanks to Insta360 for sending me this to review. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.